What's up guys, Jesse here. So it's new iPhone season, and of course, like they do every year, Apple's making all kinds of claims about how this year they've made so many changes and upgrades that makes this the best iPhone ever. But a lot of people, or at least I think more people than usual, seem to be a bit upset with how little they've changed. Well, my take is that design-wise, yes, not much has changed. And I think to the untrained eye, you might not even be able to tell the difference. And on the inside, honestly, kind of the same story. Not a whole lot has changed here. But they did make a couple of key changes in key areas that I think makes this year's iPhones actually pretty compelling to some people. And this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the big one. So like I mentioned, physically the design has barely changed. We've still got the same boxy design with the glossy stainless steel side rails which are absolute fingerprint magnets and the matte glass back. The only change physically that you might be able to pick up on is that the camera bump is now quite a bit larger and the notch containing all the face ID hardware is now a little bit smaller. It's still got all the same sensors in there but the earpiece has been moved up to the very top and the rest of the sensors have gotten pushed together for an overall size difference of about 20%. And I got to say that it does make a pretty big difference in being less distracting. Of course, it's still not ideal, but it is a step in the right direction. Like last year on the iPhone 12 models, I found it pretty hard to ignore, but this one, not so much. However, it is a bit unfortunate that Apple hasn't really done anything useful with the extra space, and I really wish that they at least allowed for the battery percentage to be viewable. But overall, very welcome change. Now on the back, like I said earlier, the camera bump has gotten bigger, not only on the X and Y axis, but in the Z as well, which I mean to be totally honest, I am perfectly indifferent to. I just think it's kind of funny that the module has swollen to the point that it crosses over the midpoint of the device, and the lenses have this sort of triple layer cake thing going on where there's a bump on top of another bump on top of another bump. So all of that is to say that the bump has gotten bigger and it absolutely will rock on a table. But I mean, as long as the cameras are good, I'm totally fine with this. So how are they? Well, it's probably the best camera system in any phone that I've ever tested. So you still got your triple lens camera system in the back, still all 12 megapixels, but the sensors are all now a little larger and the apertures, like the little holes that let the light in, have all gotten a little bit bigger, except for the telephoto. So f1.5 on the main lens up from 1.6 last year, f1.8 on the ultrawide up from 2.4, and f2.8 on the telephoto down from 2.2 last year. And that decrease on the telephoto is, I assume, because it's now got a three times optical zoom versus is just the two and a half on last year's and they couldn't fit everything in. So I just threw a bunch of numbers at you guys, but as far as image quality goes, what you really need to know is that all three cameras perform very well in all kinds of conditions and autofocus is super snappy and reliable. And with the changes that they made to the sensor size and apertures, now the ultra wide and telephoto perform much closer to the main lens. So the main lens is still obviously the best, but the other two are much closer than they used to be. And I actually already have a whole video comparing the camera performance of this year's to last year's iPhones. So make sure you go check that out if you want some more real world examples. But you get plenty of sharpness, colors and saturation all look pretty true to life. And I particularly had a lot of fun with the new macro lens. Minimum focus is only two centimeters, which is insanely close, like almost touching the lens type of close. And you can get some pretty interesting shots. And you also don't have to go into a macro mode or anything like that. The phone will just automatically switch over if you get too close to an object. I'm sure this is something that I'm not really going to use after the novelty wears off, but still pretty cool nonetheless. We've also now got a couple of different photo styles to choose from which works sort of like filters on Instagram, but are a little bit more subtle and also just baked into the photo. Personally, I was a big fan of this rich contrast one, so now I just leave it on pretty much all the time. So the photo quality is good, but honestly, it's not that much better than other flagships on the market. Where I think this really blows everything else out of the water though, is the video quality. I mean, there's just really not that much to say here except that it's really, really good. And I think if you're someone who really likes to shoot video on their smartphone, this is pretty much the only choice right now. We've also got the new cinematic mode, which is basically just like portrait mode, but for video. 
and it works pretty well for the most part, but there's definitely some haziness around the edges, and it definitely won't be replacing proper cameras anytime soon. But I think this is the start of something pretty big, and I think this is one of those things that a very, very small number of very, very creative people will use and make really cool stuff with, and I think for those people, this is a pretty sick feature. But for the vast majority of us, I think this will just be one of those things that you play around with a couple times when you first get the phone, and then just kind of leave untouched. Still a really cool feature to have though, but I wouldn't go out and buy an iPhone 13 just for that feature. My only real criticism that I have about this camera system right now, if I have to say anything, is that it seems to suffer from lens flare a lot more than other smartphones. Really not that big of a deal though, and I still love it. Anyways, next big upgrade for this year is the new 120Hz Pro Motion display. And this is probably the thing that I was the most excited about for this year's iPhone. So it's only on the Pro versions, classic Apple, but it just makes such a big difference in making the phone feel smoother, and it is about time that Apple put this in. Like it's not unusual for Apple to take their time in implementing new features like this, but they are literally like three or four years late to this. But it's here now, and it feels really good. It can adjust its refresh rate between a peak of 120 all the way down to 10 hertz, which should help with battery life, which I'll get to in a second. But like I said earlier, other phones have had this tech for quite a while now, so I pretty much knew what to expect. But iOS has a lot of subtle little animations throughout the UI that just feel especially good on this new high refresh rate screen. And honestly, I would upgrade from the 12 literally just for this. That's how much better it feels than the old 60Hz panels. Anyways, the actual image quality is still pretty great as well. It's still got the same 6.7 inch screen size with the resolution of 2778 by 1284. And that's a PPI of 448 if you care about that. Which to be clear is not a bad thing. Last year's screens looked great, and so do these. It also gets quite a bit brighter than last year as well, which is nice, and I had no trouble viewing the screen even outdoors. I don't think it's quite as good as what's going on on the Samsung devices right now, but it's very, very close, and that's a compliment. Okay, so I think the last major upgrade they made this year was with the battery. So first of all, the size has increased, and it's now 4,352 milliamps, up from about 3700 last year, which definitely helps with keeping that new 120Hz display powered. But the battery life on this device is really good, like unusually good. In a typical day of use, I normally have a little over 4 hours of screen on time, but I'm regularly ending those days with like 40 or 50% battery life left. So I think if you really milked it, you might be able to make this last very close to 2 full days, which is awesome. That bigger battery does make this device a little thicker than last year and a little bit heavier as well, and last year's was already pretty heavy, so it's it's a chonky boy now. This does also still use the lightning port unfortunately and has a max charging speed of 20 watts, which is nothing crazy at all, especially when we've got other phones already pushing past 100. But honestly, it's really not that big of a deal for me on this phone just because the battery lasts so long. And it just gives you a lot of peace of mind to know that you probably won't even need to bring a charger with you when you leave the house. So, those are what I consider to be the major changes in this year's iPhones. And apart from that, we've just got a few minor updates to specs. So, A15 Bionic, 6GB of RAM, and a base storage of 128GB all the way up to a full terabyte of storage. But I mean, specs have honestly never really meant anything to iPhones, and this is definitely no huge jump in performance from last year's A14. But I mean, it was already fast, and this thing just flies through anything that you throw at it. No stuttering at all anywhere, and if you play any multiplayer games, you can be pretty sure that you're going to be the first one to finish loading. Which is, I guess, a big flex? But I mean, again, I think the biggest improvement to the specs this year was definitely to the battery. This is also now running iOS 15, which is also a pretty minor update but does add some pretty nice features. There's now an all new focus mode where you can decide who can contact you and which apps are allowed to give you notifications. And you can even remove entire screens from your homepage to eliminate any kind of temptations that those apps may cause. I think it's a pretty great feature and especially nowadays when we seem to have a million things going on all the time. 
And I also really like the level of control that you get with this versus just going into the total do not disturb mode. You also get a new notification management system where notifications from the same app will gather into a stack and it's just a little cleaner, which is nice. And Safari now has the search bar on the bottom, which took some getting used to, but I gotta say that after the initial adjustment period, I actually really enjoyed this. Now, as far as the rest of iOS goes, it's more or less the same as what we had with iOS 14, which is for the most part, pretty good. Just very simple and is in my opinion, very visually pleasing. However, I do have to say that I did notice that it just feels like iOS was not really made for big phones. Like there's pretty much no multitasking of any kind and YouTube does now have picture in picture mode, but only for premium. And it also has to be in one of the corners and can't be just floating in the middle somewhere. And the lack of a back button makes it so that you have to reach all the way up to the top left part of the screen if you want to exit certain pages. Like it feels like the max version of the iPhone just gives you a bigger viewing area but no extra functionality, which is something I think other big phones tend to handle a lot better. But I think if you're coming from an older iPhone, this is not something that will bother you. Anyways, overall, I really like this phone. Even though the physical design stayed pretty much the exact same, Apple improved on the areas that I think really matter. Improvements to an already great camera system, smaller notch, and finally a 120 hertz screen. About time. So I guess the question is then, if you already have an 11 or 12, should you upgrade? And I think my answer to that is if your phone isn't causing you any problems right now, then no. Just cause this phone came out doesn't mean the phone that you're using is all of a sudden obsolete. But personally, I think if you are in the market for a new iPhone right now, the Pro models are worth considering over the regular versions for the 120Hz screens alone. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Remember to smash that like button, and if you enjoy content like this, think about subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace!